how to add a new action in the turn-based tactic project. The way the project is set up, every time the player is going to interact with either the grid, the units, the combat system, or anything else, he's going to go through the action system. So that's why that if you're going to add a new feature to your project that is specific to your game, you're going to want to create a new action for it. And that's why I'm going to show you how it works today. So let's get to it. But first, what are the actions and how can you use them in the project? Because if you're going to create some actions, well, it's pretty important to know how they work. So what is an action? An action is a simple blueprint that we have right here under the player folder in actions. Right here, we have the BP action. It's a simple blueprint actor that is spawned in the game by the action system when you want to select a specific action. So let's say you want to select the action to cast a spell, for example, you're just going to spawn the cast spell action in the level. It's going to wait there until you're ready to cast your spell. And then once you're ready, you can just tell it, okay, cast your spell and the action is going to do its job. You can execute the action as many times as you want, but once you're done with it, you can simply deselect the action and it's going to destroy itself automatically. And every interaction that the player has with the game goes through one of these actions. And I say these actions because I have a bunch of them. All the actions that I have in my project are child of the BP action. That's just the parent class. And everything else is just a child of that class. So for example, if I go in my combat folder right here, I have three actions that are related to to the combat, I have an action that lets the player cast a spell, pretty straightforward. I have an action that lets the player move a unit on the grid during the combat, pretty straightforward also. And finally, I have a third action that lets the player wait until its next turn before doing something else. And these actions are selected automatically depending on the state of the combat. So if it's your turn and it's your turn to move a unit on the grid, you're going to select the action combat move. But if it's your turn and you selected a spell, now it's time to cast a spell. So it's going to switch to the cast spell action. But then once you're done with your turn, you're just going to go back and wait for the next turn. And going through those actions affect the way the left click and the right click button of the player interact with the world. And these actions are just the ones that are executed during the combat. But in the project, there are a lot of action. For example, we have the overworld action right here that lets you remove or add a unit in the overworld, select a unit in the overworld, move the unit in the overworld, or set another overworld group as an encounter. Some of those actions are really used in the real game, but others are just used in the debug menu to test all the different features. And if you looked at the debug menu, you probably know that I have a lot of debug features. Yeah, I have a lot of debug actions right here. But that simply illustrates how easy it is to create as many actions as you want and map them to the two inputs available to the player, which are the left click and the right click. With those two buttons, you can execute as many things as you want in the game. And that's pretty awesome. And did I say that as soon as you don't need the action anymore, you just have to deselect it and that's it. The action gets destroyed and you're done with it. So yeah, it's really just a really simple system that lets you select the action whenever you want, execute it whenever you want, and deselect it once you're done with it. Okay, good. Now it's time to create some actions and see if they work. So to create a new action, I'm just going to go over my BP action right here and create a new child blueprint class. We're going to create three new debug action today together. So we're really going to be able to switch between those actions and see if the switch works properly. So the first action we're going to create is going to be a pretty simple one. It's just going to be a print string action. So when the player is going to click, it's just going to print a string. Perfect. Now we need a second action. So right click on the BP action, create a new child, the blueprint class. That's what I'm going to name it. Draw a debug line because we're going to use this action to draw a debug line on the screen. And finally, one last action for fun. So create a new child, the blueprint class, which I'm going to name spawn cubes because we're going to spawn some cubes with this action. Perfect. Okay. So now we have three new action and now we just have to add the logic in them to make them do whatever we want. So first uh, we have to open them, obviously. So I'm just going to right click and edit on all of them. And for all of them, I'm going to open the full blueprint editor because we want to modify the code a little bit. So let's open it uh, for all of them. We're going to start uh, with the print string. So in the print string action right here, there's actually just two functions that we really care about for today. So in the functions right here, we can override a few functions and the one we want are the execute action and execute over the action function that we have right here. The execute action is called every time the player clicks with either the left or right mouse buttons. And the execute over the action is called every time the player overs a new tile on the grid. So we're going to override both of those to add our logic in them. So override the execute action. And then we're also going to override the execute over the action just like that. And we're going to start with the execute action because why not? And in here, we don't actually need to execute the parent action because there's nothing in there. It's just a 
an empty container for all the child action to be able to execute their code. So I'm just going to delete all that just so it's clear that we don't need to call the parent. And now since we are inside the print string execute action, I'm just going to print a string. So print string right here and I'm just going to print the index. Here we go. We now have a print string action. So every time the player clicks on the grid, it's going to call the execute action function, which is going to print a string. That's pretty nice. We're going to do a pretty similar thing inside the execute overt action. So every time the player overs a new tile, uh, we don't need the parent action. So let's delete all that. And I'm going to do a print string also. Uh, same thing, I'm going to print the index. Uh, why not? But I'm going to make it a different color so we can recognize it. So let's say a tint of red, dark, orangey, whatever. That's all right. We're going to have two texts on the screen, either one blue, one orange. That tells us if the player clicks or moves around on the grid with his mouse. Uh, perfect. So let's compile and save this first action. We're done with it. Now we're going to go inside the draw debug line action. And in this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to override the two same functions. So override, override the execute action. We can delete the parent because we don't need it. And we're also going to override the execute over the action. So let's go in there and delete the parent because we don't need it. Then we're going to start with the execute action and it's going to go a little bit faster because we don't really care about that code today. I just want to show you how to create actions and use them. So I'm going to execute my action, which is going to do a line trace under the mouse cursor to see if we are over the ground uh, of my level. And if so, I'm just going to draw a debug sphere at the location under the mouse cursor. So we're just going to draw a sphere when the player clicks on the grid. And then when we are overing a new tile on the grid, we're going to do a pretty similar thing. Uh, we're going to line trace under the mouse cursor to see if we are over the ground. And if so, this time I'm going to draw a debug line from the previous location, the last time this function was called, to the new location that we received from the line trace. So every time this function is called, I'm going to draw a debug line from the previous location to the current location. And then uh, don't forget to re-update the previous location, otherwise the code will not work. So yeah, I'm just going to draw a line every time I'm moving a new tile so we can see if it works or not. And finally, for the third action that spawns cubes on the grid, we're just going to override the execute action function. So override the execute action. We can delete the call to the parent because we don't need it. And the code's going to look uh, do something like that. So pretty similar. We're going to do a line trace. If it's true, I'm going to spawn a static mesh actor this time uh, a little bit above the ground. So if the mouse is over the ground, I'm going to add a thousand units in the air. So the cube is going to be a little bit higher than the ground. And I'm going to set its rotation and scale to some random values to have a little bit of variation. Then I'm going to go on the right a little bit right here. And I'm going to set its mobility to movable because we want to simulate the physics on those cubes. I think it would be a little bit interesting. And then I'm going to set the static mesh to the cube, obviously. And finally, I'm going to simulate the physics on the cube. Perfect. So that's it. We're not going to override the execute over the action because we don't really need it for that one. So we don't need to override it if we don't have anything to do. Perfect. So now we're done with all the three actions we're going to test today. And now it's time to go back in the level to test them. But actually, to be able to test the actions, we need to tell the action system that we want to select those new action. So we want to select the draw debug line, the print string and the spawn cubes action. And to do that, well, we're going to need a bit of code uh, because right now we have the player actions, uh, which is the action system in my level. Uh, the level I'm currently in is my debug level. So L debug, which is inside the demo folder maps uh, and L debug that we have right here. I use that one because I already have a player actions in the level, which is the action system. And now we're going to need a bit of code just to tell that player actions to select one of those new action we just created. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new blueprint. That one's going to be an actor. I'm going to name it, let's say, test actions. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to drop it inside my level debug. So it's right here. And we're going to use that blueprint actor to tell my player actions which action we want to use. So let's open that blueprint. Let's go in the graph. And I'm just going to paste a bit of code right here. Here we go. So super simple. We are just going to use the numbers on the keyboard to select which action we want to use. So let's say if I press my number one on my keyboard, it's going to take the player actions in the level. So get actor of class, get the player action. And we're going to select the print string action for the left click and the draw debug line action for the right click. So when I press one, it's going to select both of those action. Then when I press the key number two on my keyboard, it's going to select the spawn cube action on the left click this time. So it's going to replace whatever was selected before by the spawn cube action. And then for the right click action, well, I'm just going to clear it. I'm not selecting anything. So right now I don't have anything. I have it set to none. So I'm just going to not select anything for my right click action when I press two on my keyboard. And finally, press three is just going to deselect both those actions. So nothing selected for the 
left click and nothing selected for the right click. And as you saw, you can select any of the actions that are already in the project. So we have the cast spell action, the find pattern target and everything else you can find in the debug level actually in all the debug types. But right now we want to test the new action we created. So I set it to print string, draw debug line and spawn cubes. And that's it. Now when we press on the key one, two, three on the keyboard, it should select the right actions. And if for you're wondering right here, the enable input is just to be able to enable those events right here, because this new blueprint is not inside a pawn or a player controller. So we have to enable the inputs manually. And that's what I'm doing right here. Perfect. So let's compile and save the test actions. And now let's go back in the level debug. And one last thing before I press play, I'm just going to enable the collisions on my ground because by default, I'm not using the collisions in my game, actually not the physical collision. So it's not really going to work when we spawn the cubes and enable the physics on them. So I'm just going to select all my platforms right here that I have right here, all my SMQ platforms. I'm going to go down all the way to the collisions right here. Make sure they are set to custom. I'm going to enable the collisions physics. So collision enable query and physics. And I'm going to block all the channel just like that. So it should work for this example. I'm going to save everything and now we can play and see if it works. So by default, I don't have any action selected, so I can click around, do anything I want, left click, right click, left click, right click, it doesn't matter because I don't have any action selected. So now let's select an action with the number one on the keyboard. So uh, if I key press one, you can see on the top left corner right here that I'm selecting the first two actions. So we have the action that prints a string when we click, just like that, I'm printing the tile number. And also when I'm overing a new tile, it should also print the over tile, which is not happening right now. And the reason behind that is just because, well, I don't have a grid on my level, so I'm not overing any tile, so it's not triggering my action. So I'm just going to generate a new grid. So let's generate a grid square. Here we go. Now, if I move my mouse over the tiles, we can see that now we have a few things that that's are happening. So we can see in the top left corner that the numbers are getting updated when we are overing a new tile. So that's pretty good. I can click to also print the execute action number. So that one right here, when I spam the left click button, we can see that it writes the blue number and the orange number when I I'm moving a new tile so we can alternate between those. Here we go. So the first action seems to work. This is for the left click action. Both those numbers in the top left corner are for the left click action, which is right now using the print string action. So, okay, that seems to work. Now the yellow line that you can see on the screen, this is for my right click action. So I have two actions selected at the same time, one for the left click and one for the right click. Both of those are executing the overt action. So that's why I have a yellow line on my screen right now that is following my mouse and also the print string on the left. So we can see that both actions get updated at the same time when we are overing a new tile. But on top of that, I can do right clicks to also execute the action that is executed when we click on the button. So the execute action function. So on my right click, I'm spawning a random debug sphere here and there. So here we go, to, 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 to. spawning debug sphere. And if I click my left click, I can still print blue numbers on the top left corner. So we can do both actions at the same time. Left click, like click, left click, right click, left click, right click. Oh, well, it's hard to say. Anyway, we can do all those actions at the same time because we have multiple actions selected. So that's pretty good. And also one bonus tip, if you're moving your mouse super fast on the grid right now, you can see that it draws a line and it updates the selected tile, the over tile actually. But if you're holding down the action button, we can see that it also execute the execute action when we are overing a new tile. That's part of the features that are in the player action. So if I'm overing a new tile while I have the right mouse button down or the left mouse button, for example, we can have those two buttons down at the same time. It also executes the action when I'm overing a new tile. So you can execute it super fast by simply moving your mouse all over the place super fast. Okay. Anyway, so that was for the two first actions. So we can see that it works, but now are we able to select another action? So I'm just going to press two on my keyboard to select my second pair of action, which is on the left click spawning cubes. Okay. It seems to work. And on the right click, it's nothing. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. So that's pretty good. So left click, right click, nothing. I can click here, 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 here to spawn new cubes here, here here and here. So yeah, we can spawn cubes with the left click and do nothing with the right click. So that's pretty good. And if I press three on my keyboard now, either my left click or right click do anything because I don't have any action selected in that case, because that's what I'm doing. I'm deselecting both actions. So, okay. The system seems to work yeah. and now we can easily switch between those. So uh, I can press one again to redraw everything. I can press two to spawn a bunch of cubes. I can go back to one, spawn a bunch of things. 
here we go. And then go to two, go to one, go to two, go to one, go to two, and switch between those. So we can use as many actions as we want as long as we just switch between those. Here we go. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess we covered everything. I showed you how to create new actions, and now you're able to create as many actions as you want and switch between those to add as many features as you want in the game, depending on the context of the game. So yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for today's video, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye bye.